The LG G3 has been one of the most talked about TVs this year, but with tough competition and the threat of the Sony A95 Owl Lumen, I wanna know, is this the TV of 2023? Hey guys, Louis from Smart Home Sounds here and welcome back to the channel and yet another TV review. Now today, I've got my hands on this, the LG G3 OLED TV with MLA technology, which has received a lot of hype, claiming the title of OLED TV of the year by a number of reviewers. So in this video, I wanna take a little bit of a step back and number one, see if it's worth the hype. Number two, whether we think it offers good value for money. And number three, if it has done enough to take that title of OLED of the year before the Sony A95L has the chance to compete when it launches in a few months time. Now, as with all of our TV reviews, we've been living with this G3 for a few weeks now and have been focusing on real world tests to see how this actually performs when you're living with it day to day. Now, if you like what we do and you want us to make more content like this, then we'd love it if you hit that subscribe button. It really helps us. And as always, if you're based in the UK and you're looking to pick up a TV and want to support us, then head to smarthomesounds.co.uk. We also offer free delivery and our team of tech guides are more than happy to help at any stage. Every year, TV manufacturers battle it out to bring us the latest and greatest, and especially when it comes to taking the top spot for the best OLED on the market. Now for this G3, it's all about MLA. So for those of you not in the loop, MLA or micro lens array technology is a way of combating the most common issues with OLEDs brightness or lack of. Now, MLA technology has been designed to maximize the brightness output of the panel without requiring extra power and pushing OLEDs further, which could increase the risk of burning and image retention. So how does it work? Well, it adds a layer of billions of microscopic lenses or lenslets, which essentially maximize the efficiency of the OLED pixels. Now, in a regular OLED, you lose some of the light through internal reflections, which leads to a drop in brightness. So what the micro lens array does is it takes that light and help direct it out Words. This obviously improves the brightness, but also helps give a more vivid image and will improve the viewing angles too. Now we've previously seen the new Panasonic MZ2000 featuring MLA in Berlin earlier this year, and we were really impressed with the performance. So I've been very excited to get this MLA panel into our studio for proper testing of this technology. MLA is obviously the key focus of the G3's performance, but there are a lot of other need to knows of this one. So first up, sitting at the top of LG's 4K OLED range is their flagship OLED, the G series, otherwise known as the gallery series, offers the best of LG's OLED tech each year in an aesthetic, flush to the wall design. This is a 100 Hertz native OLED Evo panel, which when combined with MLA and LG's Brightness Booster Max, should lead up to a 70% brighter performance than traditional OLED TVs, such as their A3 or B3 models. We've also got LG Meta in this TV, which is another bit of tech helping to extract the most brightness out of your display using both hardware and software. And the G3 features a heatsink, which will, again, help with brightness as it enables your TV to push the OLEDs brighter without putting too much pressure on the pixels and running the risk of burning. So clearly brightness has been at the top of the agenda for this G3. Now this model is available in 55 inch, 65 inch like we've got behind me, 77 inch and 83 inch. And as expected, these don't come cheap. And we're looking at an RRP of around about 2,200 pound for the 55 inch, right up to seven grand for the 83 inch. It is worth highlighting though that the 83 inch version doesn't feature MLA or Meta technology and will only have a brightness boost of around about 30%. Now we've also got an upgraded processor in this model. The Alpha 9 AI processor 4K is now in its sixth generation. Now this new processor brings a few notable upgrades. So first of all, OLED Dynamic Tone Mapping Pro allows for more zones for individual HDR optimization, giving deeper blacks and brighter whites. HDR Expression Enhancer will also sharpen foreground elements to give extra depth to scenes. Now in terms of audio, there's a new auto balance control feature, which is designed to keep things, well, nice and balanced. So that's the tech at work with this TV. But before I come on to how it's performed in our testing, I just wanna take a moment to discuss the design because this is a really good looking TV. Now as a gallery TV, it's been designed to be wall mounted. And I think they call it a wallpaper design on their website as it can sit flush with your wall to provide an almost picture frame appearance. Now, of course, to do that, you do need to have a space where you can wall mount a TV. And for the best appearance, you'll need the power and wiring to be set back in a recess in the wall to allow for it to sit flush. Now this TV 
does come with a wall mount which retracts into the TV to get that flush finish. There's no stand supplied with this, but you can purchase one separately from LG if you can't wall mount your TV. Now, I've not tested that stand yet, but from reviews I've seen online, I don't think it's quite as sturdy or as premium as you'd hope to match this TV. So that's just something to consider. We've got a nice slim aluminium bezel, which gives a premium finish. And it almost feels a bit like the Apple Studio display, which you guys know I like the look of. Now there's no major change from the G2 design wise, but to be honest, I don't think that was needed. It's a premium looking TV to suit its premium flagship title and price point. Now, even the cable management on the back is nice, but one thing that's not quite so premium though, is this remote, which does feel a little bit plasticky and cheap and isn't backlit or anything like that. Now, it's not a deal breaker by any means, but I think that LG could do better than this. Now, one thing that is new design-wise, actually, is a more effective anti-reflective coating on this TV. It's still a glossy screen, but they've improved the design to reduce distracting reflections, which is always a big win, in my opinion. In an hour testing with a background light or window or even a white T-shirt, it was pretty effective. Now, once you've got this TV set up, you'll be greeted with LG's new WebOS 23, their new hub, which has had a few tweaks on last year. Now, most notably, they've reduced how many apps and pages are on there. So you're not scrolling for ages and they've got these cards here, which makes things a little bit easier to navigate. I think it's definitely the best OS that I've seen from LG. I just wish this advertising banner wasn't the main thing that you're greeted with. Now, one thing I do love, however, is that you can set your chosen team in this sports section here to get personalized alerts and quick access to match schedules right from this home screen. Now, you can also use this multi-view feature to watch two things at once if you're like me and can't get enough sport. Okay, so it looks great and it all sounds promising, but how has it performed in our testing? Well, I've broken this down into three sections for you guys, picture quality, sound quality, and gaming. And I've also included a few comparisons, including the Sony A95K, to get a feel for how this G3 will compare with the A95L when it does arrive. But if you want any dedicated head-to-head -head comparisons, then let me know in the comments below. First things first, I have been absolutely blown away by the brightness of this TV. Now I know it's all that everyone has talked about, but genuinely seeing it in person, I have been very impressed. Your eyes are just drawn to the screen. I had it next to the Sony A80L initially in our studio as we've just reviewed that and wow, it was like night and day. And the A80L isn't a dim OLED by any stretch. Now for context, I got a similar brightness performance between the G3 and the A80L when I reduced the OLED pixel brightness on the G3 down from 100 to 25 when both were in standard mode. Now you guys know that we don't tend to get into the nitty gritty in our reviews. The specs and stats can only tell you so much, but LG have shared that this TV should get a peak brightness of roughly 2,040 nits when it's in HDR vivid mode and around 1,400 nits in the HDR cinema mode preset. Now last year's G2 maxed out at just over 900 nits on that one, so we are talking a decent jump up in brightness here. I was concerned that the emphasis on brightness would come at the expense of the overall picture, but I don't think that that's the case with this G3. It's a well-balanced picture with really decent black levels and contrast. Now HDR content is obviously where this TV really shines, particularly with Dolby Vision, but to be honest, most content I've tested on this TV has looked good. Even lower res content like live and broadcast TV has been handled really well. Details are nice and sharp and overall the G3's upscaling algorithm does a good job with non-4K content. Now there are a lot of tweaks that you can make in the settings of this TV and I would suggest having a little play around to find what suits you in your space. Now if you're not sure on where to start in the settings because they can be a little bit confusing, LG have this personalized picture wizard here where you can go through and select the images that you prefer and it will then customize a personalized picture profile for you. Now apparently I like the clear and sharp picture. Obviously out of the box you're going to be in this standard mode and I think they've gone for maximum impact and the wow factor which means that the images can be a little bit oversaturated for me and the overall bright is actually too bright in our studio. So it's great for a bright light space, but I'd imagine for most rooms that you're gonna to want to come into this setting and bring the brightness down a little bit. There are some settings using AI on this TV, including this AI brightness setting, but I personally turn that off as I'd rather select the brightness myself. Now you'll probably also want to turn off the energy saving step as that will adjust the brightness and the dynamic range, which will mean that you're not really getting the most out of having a TV like this. Now, of course, you've got all of your picture modes here to choose between. So we've got vivid, cinematic, standard, all the usual options though, they will change depending on the content that you're playing. Now one setting that I will highlight is this filmmaker mode here, which is where LG put their emphasis for the best image accuracy. It's a very notable change from the standard mode, but for those after the best accuracy and for content to appear as intended, then this is the most
mode for you. Now you can also set filmmaker mode auto start to automatically change into this mode when the TV recognizes film content and it will provide the aspect ratio, color and frame rate as the film director intended. I've personally found vivid mode to be extremely bright in a darker space and for me the image is a little too over processed and oversaturated but if you prefer that type of picture profile then you can just bring the brightness levels down a bit. Of course you can dive a lot deeper into the settings to make sure that you're getting the most out of this TV for your space and your preferred viewing experience. Now I'm not going to get into the settings much further as it's so personal and what works for me in our space might be the complete opposite for you in your space. But a few things to look out for are this super resolution feature which I've personally turned off because I felt it was almost a little bit over enhanced and loses some realism. Now also in our darker space I've also opted to bring down the brightness settings for logos because that's something that can feel blindingly bright when you're watching a film in the dark. Be aware that certain settings will only show when you're playing certain content on the TV. So you get a few different options when watching HDR content and more options again when watching Dolby Vision content. For example, filmmaker mode is going to be the most accurate mode in HDR and you'll want to turn HDR tone mapping off if you want the content to be as intended. For Dolby Vision content, the cinema mode is the most accurate and best for a darker space or you can opt for cinema home if you're in a brighter room. When it comes to motion, I found this TV handled fast paced action scenes and sports well. There are a few different settings that you can play around with again here. Now personally I would avoid turning true motion on if you can but if you feel like you're suffering from 24 frames per second judder then try this cinematic movement setting which will make up a few frames to reduce that judder for you. I have to say the viewing angles on this TV are brilliant. The best that I've seen on an OLED yet which I think is down to the combination of the MLA technology and that upgraded anti-reflection screen. So we're back over in the studio now guys and obviously as you can see we've also got the Sony A80L set up alongside the G3. So what I want to do is focus on a couple of scenes specifically with the G3 first and then we'll draw some comparisons with the A80L. So I want to start with this shot from Avatar and I'd say that the overall picture really draws you in. There's nice detail in the sky here and in the hair and then the brighter highlights here around the eye are definitely more captivating. Again, now this image might look a little bit oversaturated, almost like you are in vivid mode. So if you'd like something that maybe offers a little bit more of a realistic picture, then you could come out of standard and go over to something like filmmaker mode. So as you can see, we flicked over onto Ready Player One now. And one of the things that I was slightly concerned about with these brighter pictures is how much information in the highlights or the whites of the image that we'd lose. But as you can see here on the G3, especially up in the clouds in the sky, all of that information is retained and it's definitely not blown out. Now this shot here from Ready Player One shows that the increased brightness also helps pull details from the darker areas of the shots like this corner down here. And if I show you the Sony A80L as a standard bright OLED for comparison, you can see how much more information you're getting and that adds to the overall immersion that you get with this G3 TV. So when it comes to color accuracy, I think that this TV does a really good job. So if we take a look at this scene here from June, compared with the A80L, you can see that we get very different colors from both TVs. Now generally, I would say that Sony's image processing tends to be the more accurate one and if I flick this G3 into filmmaker mode, you can see that it becomes a lot closer to the A80L, which suggests that this mode is showing the most accurate colors. Now, now this TV does have a smooth gradation setting which can be used to reduce any visible banding but proceed with caution as it can quite quickly smooth over those fine details which make scenes feel more realistic. You can see that medium and high remove the texture on the clothes and the skin texture so if you feel it's needed then low will probably do the job. Now, one of the models that I was really keen to compare this G3 with is the Sony A95K. Now, of course, when the A95L launches later this year, that's gonna be a massive head-to-head, -head, but I think we'll get a good idea of comparisons here. So instantly, you can see that jump up in brightness on the G3. Now, if I put them both in their standard mode at max brightness, it's clear that the G3 is a step up there. Taking this scene from Spider-Man Far From Home, the highlights are slightly brighter here. Now, I do think there are similar details in the darker areas, but I actually would say that there's a little bit more detail in the A95K here. It's a little bit sharper, I would say, on his shoulder, on the clothing, in his hair, and also ever so slightly under his eye. For me, one of the best things about the Sony TVs is the image processing and the color accuracy, and I do think that you can see that here. So in this scene, I flipped the G3 into filmmaker mode, and I still think the skin tones are more realistic on the Sony. And I also think there's slightly deeper blacks and better contrast, which all help with the details feeling more crisp and refined. 
Of course, you can play around with the settings on both of these TVs, and honestly, I think you'll get a picture quality that you'll like from either of them. And of course, when the A95R launches, Sony are promising that that will be their brightest ever OLED. And I think they've even said it will deliver 200% as much brightness as this A95K. And of course, as a QD OLED, I'm expecting the colors and the color purity to be very impressive on that model. So it'll be very interesting to see how those side-by-sides look. Now there are of course other models that I would like to compare with this G3, especially the Samsung S95C and Panasonic MZ2000. So let me know in the comments down below if you'd like to see that on our channel and what your thoughts are for those head-to-heads. Now, before I get into sound quality, one thing that I do want to mention, as I know that this will be a big thing for some of you, is that the G3 and the model below the C3 can decode DTS internally, which is a function that's been missing from these models since the C9 model from back in 2019. Now, we've also got Atmos support and all LG 2023 OLEDs are compatible with IMAX Enhanced Audio 2. Now, as I mentioned, the new A9 AI processor can virtually upmix to 9.1.2, and internally, we've got a 4.2 channel speaker system on this model with a total of 60 watts audio output. But if I'm being honest, you're gonna want to avoid using the TV speakers for your audio if you can. The sound quality of this TV isn't what I was hoping for especially when compared with the levels that we're getting picture quality wise. I think the word that describes it best is underwhelming. Now it's not awful of course, and it does a job, but the bass is lacking any oomph, and I feel like it's not offering the best clarity for vocals and center channel. So personally, I would prefer to add a soundbar to this TV, so you get an audio experience that matches the immersion of the picture. Now if you want to stick with LG, then this TV will work alongside compatible LG soundbars, so you're also using the TV speakers. When it comes to gaming, there's not a lot of change here, but the G2 was already a very solid gaming TV. For me, if you're looking for a great gaming OLED TV, then this one has got to be one of the best options available right now. We've got four HDMI 2.1 inputs on this TV, which all support 4K 120Hz, ALLM, and VRR. And this is something that I know a lot of people look for in a TV, and could be a reason to opt for this LG over something like the Sony A95L, for example, which will only offer two ports. Plus, with VRR, as I mentioned, NVIDIA G-Sync compatibility and AMD FreeSync Premium, this TV offers really smooth gameplay. HDIG support is also well implemented, making the most of the higher peak brightness and enhancing HDR gaming without double tone mapping and compatibility. HDR games. For any Xbox Series X gamers, then this G3 is a great option for you, as we've also got support for Dolby Vision Gaming up to 4K 120Hz. Now, we are expecting this on some Philips and Sony TVs later this year, but they won't offer the full 4 HDMI 2.1 support, so the G3 will still take the win there. In terms of response times, we're looking at a rapid 0.1 milliseconds and an input lag of less than 10 milliseconds when in game optimizer mode. Using the boost mode, we're also looking at around 4.7 milliseconds at 120 frames per second. Now, LG offer this game optimizer menu, which is only available when you set your TV to game mode, but it does give you a variety of settings which you might find handy when gaming. So if we take a closer look at the options that we've got, you can see that you've got your current frames per second, you've got your VRR, you've got black stabilizer, and also your low latency. Now you'll see below that we've also got a couple of other options here that we can explore in a little bit more depth and really tweak the picture to what we want. Now, of course, the upgrades in picture quality on this TV carry through to the immersion when you're gaming. The brighter picture picture helps draw out details in the more shadowed areas and the image is crisp and vibrant. The game optimizer mode personally feels a little bit more washed out than I would like. It's a drop down in brightness from HDR filmmaker mode for sure and I found that the colors do lose a little bit of that vibrancy too but you do however have a lot of settings that you can play around with to really fine tune a picture that you're happy with but just bear in mind that some settings are grayed out in game optimizer mode. Now LG seem to be instead pushing for you to optimize the settings for different game genres so you've got FPS, RPG, RTS, and other options. And you can come into these and tweak the settings for the genre of the game. Now, personally, I think you're gonna get the best image accuracy in the standard preset here. And I'd also stick to the default settings if you can. But of course, have a play around and see what works best for you. Another nice feature is this blue light reduction option, which will do exactly what the name suggests and reduce the blue light emitting from your panel, which is great if you're playing late at night. Finally, there is a new 444 pass-through option on this TV, which is great for console gaming, reducing posterization when displaying a 4K 120Hz signal. So, back to those three questions that I had at the start of the video. Do I think this TV is worth the hype? Now look, 
No TV is perfect, and this is no exception, but I will admit that I have been very impressed with this TV over the past few weeks. It's captivating to watch, and it does tick a lot of my boxes. The brightness, the gaming functionality, viewing angles, color accuracy, it's a beast of a TV, and it's stunning to look at, both in terms of design and visuals. Now, in terms of value for money, while this is an expensive model, I do feel like LG are really pushing here to offer you as much bang for your buck, and the progression in terms of brightness are pretty commendable. Now, I'm a huge fan of MLA, and and look forward to seeing this trickle down into the more affordable OLED options in the future. So I think for those of you who have been avoiding OLED for a lack of brightness, then this TV, obviously budget allowing, is a great way to go. So is this the TV to beat in 2023? Yeah, absolutely it is. So far from what I've seen and my initial impressions on the competition, I think this G3 has a very, very good chance of being our TV of the year. Of course, I have some big head-to-head -head comparisons to do, and my hunch is that the A95L will be pushing very close to this G3, and that, truthfully, is what's holding me back from saying this G3 is the TV of the year. But that A95L will come with a bigger price tag, so it's still likely that the G3 will offer better value for money. So if that head-to-head -head sounds like something that you guys will want to catch, then make sure you subscribe down below so you don't miss out. In the meantime, I wanna hear from you if you've taken the plunge with this G3. Share your thoughts down in the comments and help the community out. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.